three points to podcast. You wouldn't want my life to get boring. <laughs> now that's the end of the credits. Spoilers. Thing. Hello and welcome to Three Points Your Company. A you don't podcast get to about Star Wars. What I put at the end of the credits. Although, I don't think we'll ever top podcast about going off the rails. Apparently, the hey everybody, I'm Scott. <laughs> I don't know. You were just talking about erotic fiction, so... And I'm pretty sure we got that recorded. Friend fiction. Ooh. Uh, so I'm Scott. I'm drinking you into... Young. I'm drinking you into uh, Lime Pilsner because I bought a whole bunch of them and I still have them. Classic. Uh, joining with me today is Mike in person. Mike! hey Uh So I made it in person today. Uh, thanks, baby Kylo, for becoming slightly more bearable and letting me get away for a little bit yeah a portent of things to come (laughs) let's hope so jesus christ uh i am drinking the squatters nitro red ale uh this used to be just like a seasonal thing but i think they're bringing it around full time and it is quite good cool yes uh also drinking that is Stu. hey Stu. hey yeah Stu. i'm also drinking the nitro red ale we both bought them independently of one another and showed up and we're like oh somebody has to change Oh, you didn't go into the beer store just Great holding minds. hands. And... <laughs> Separate beer stores, even. Ooh. And, of course, Jet James is here, our hey, producer. Hey, what's up? I'm drinking the Nitro Red Ale because I'm not leaving the house. Yeah! <laughs> That's living. Oh, hey, uh, mm, mm-hmm. I'm uh, drinking a 10 cup us whiskey. Joining by remote is Tater. Uh, Tater, what? Uh, oh, oh yeah. ready? Gotta make it. Ooh. I gotta make it worse. You were <laughs> sick, you bastard. Yeah, if your ski makes the pain better, like at, yeah, like whiskey, at least that's what you're like supposed to go do. for put, something. Put and bourbon makes hot on your toddies. kids' gums when whiskey they're sore. Whiskey is medicine. Right? That how it works. Hot toddies it's kind would of the be same awesome. Idea. Hot toddies are awesome. Yeah, they're gross. I don't like them. No, do you not know what a hot toddy is? <laughs> hey, I'm Brody, and I'm calling all the way from France. What? <laughs> You what? <laughs> you what? <laughs> uh, no, uh, today Brody has a really bad uh, French accent. Okay, so you the only one that <laughs> Scott's the only one that can do that one. <laughs> that was, wow, no, I was really? trying to go with that like a really bad French, French accent. That was fucking like, like Nemordian, which is racist <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> Brody and the Batroc Le Lipa are oh, hanging out today. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway. Um, Le Popotin. Well, now I know how to get a really bad racist <laughs> Japanese accent by trying to be French. Exactly. Well, is it your next uh, Star Wars RPG character has to be Nemoidian. Uh No, because I'll <laughs> slit my own throat Yeah, they're like that. Duro stats, so they're <laughs> garbage. <laughs> also, I think their stats suck. I don't know. Hey, Duros are rocking. No, Duros are. You know, Brody told us. Duros have friend. good stats. He's you probably just, just can't at home. Build his character, yeah, bitch. <laughs> I mean, he's having mail sent to my place, so I don't know how like at home he's, he's not even going to Euro Disney. That's fair. You only what have to go bitch. there once in your life. That's you know, true. Just to I've been there off. twice though. Oh well, yeah. Right. So movies. Oh, yeah. movies. Since we don't have any X Wing news for, what, five weeks plus now? Thanks, Fuka. Fuka. <laughs> Fuka. Uh, Fuka. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about Star Wars movies. I mean, there is one bit of X Wing news. That there's no news? No, that they changed. Best news. They changed uh, Guns for Hire from on the boat to shipping. They still don't give us oh, a I date. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Yeah, they mm-hmm. haven't given mm-hmm. us a date yet, but they changed their on their website. It now says. It doesn't say sh- now. Sh- it doesn't say on the boat. It now says now shipping. So based on previous day, history, it's a month out. Fufuga is shipping it. Mm-hmm. But it's shipping. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if we're lucky. And then the fact, because they can't put out a fact like right they after should. it drop. So the I mean, next they could they could. But, but, yeah. So the next fact is probably day one like patch. The, Those happen all the time. So next fact will probably drop. Oh, two weeks before Worlds? I don't know. When's, when's the next massive tournament? <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll call up Zach Bunn again and get him on. Ooh. Uh, just like the last time. I kind of thought we would have had two or three facts between then yeah. and now. But and the last fact yeah, was, was March 30th. Yeah. I mean, do you guys think so? 
do you guys think that FFG is is petty enough to not fix things yes. because somebody yeah. I don't know if fact? it's not fix things or if it's more like well we're gonna find a different fix oh, that may right. not be as good a different solution well yeah and oh. I mean like we're assuming that that was actually a real so. fact yeah right. I mean, one could hope because it seemed like it was on the right path, but yeah. <clears throat> anyway, in brighter news, maybe. Well, I don't know if it's brighter news. In case it's you haven't news. been following along, <laughs> the original directors of the Han Solo uh, standalone movie got fired, and they were kind of awesome people. Phil Lord, Chris Miller, they did uh, the Lego movie, the Jump Street remakes that were pretty funny. Uh, Last Man on Earth, one of my favorite shows on TV. And they came out in official support of turning off the motion blur on your TV. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I'm nice. pro that. But they they got essentially let go from mm-hmm. Lucasfilm. They didn't like how production on the Han Solo standalone was going, and they replaced him with Ron Howard, who has made good movies. He's just, he's just kind of an old it's dude. It's been a little while, but yeah. Yeah. He's the safest choice you can go mm-hmm. with. Is this when we uh, just splice in Ron Howard? It wasn't. I think that's even a callback for us, because I think we've done that before okay. the first time we yeah, talked like, about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and but, this is yeah, when we, Ron we Howard spliced is in. It was. <laughs> Mr. Or, I mean, go find that thing of Clint Howard ta- on that original series, Star Trek, asking Kirk if he wants to have some truck. Yeah. I <laughs> had no idea that was a thing. I'm just going to move oh, past it. Yep, uh, yes. The reason we're talking about this in movie news, uh, Ron Howard, he, he posts at least one picture a week from set, which is kind of cool. Um, but one of the pictures he posted a few weeks ago uh, started some rumors going, that this movie might show how Han and Chewie end up as buddies, and it will also show the infamous 12 or 14 parsec Kessel Run. Okay. So, I know we were already having a lot of trepidations about this movie to begin with. Let's say this is true, that this movie shows how Han and Chewie get together. We, all, we already know that Lando's in the movie, so we can assume it shows how Han gets the Falcon. Is this stuff we want to see? I mean, it's stuff that makes sense to be in a Han Solo movie, right? It's like, what do we know about Han Solo? What have what do we know but have never seen? And there's not a whole lot. Yeah. This kind of covers it. I um, mean, to the, the Han and Chewie meeting up, that's a that's an interesting thing. I mean, I was kind the of, reason Han has a life debt from Chewie is interesting. Yeah, I always we thought it, was, it would have been like done. way farther back, you know, that they... They've been they a team been, since like... They had been toddlers. buddies since Han was a wee lad. Well, yeah. He, I mean the 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 EU canon the the pre Disney canon yeah the Legends canon was that Han Solo was a recent Imperial Academy graduate and was not down with Wookiee slavery and ended up tossing his career away to save Chewie and the other Wookiees, which I I doubt we go that direction in the movie yeah I suppose that's possible still that just seems too obvious you know it seems yeah. like a fairly common backstory for. Star Wars characters. You would think if the Empire had such problem like losing so many Academy pilot graduates that they might Right, and if they didn't change something. Um is it just that all of the few mm-hmm. all happen to meet up with each other and kind of that's I mean the path to like the rebellion's not that big. And you figure that anybody with Imperial like pilot training and Imperial Academy training is gonna rise in the ranks of the rebellion. Because they have useful skills and knowledges, so they're going to end up running into each other. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Yeah. yeah. And also think about the volume of people graduating from Imperial Academies. It's mm-hmm. probably really stupidly high. Probably. Yeah. So I included a quote on our show notes here from Brody. Brody. Oi, Brody. Uh, he, he, in one of our movie fights that we have weekly, he said that uh, prequels always make the source material worse. I do it with the accent. Prequels <laughs> always make the source material worse. And I don't necessarily... That's not the right accent. I don't accent, agree on that. Prequels always Fuck. make source material worse. Damn it. Are you going to sell me a magua? <laughs> do not feed after midnight. Fuck. <laughs> So I don't agree with that statement, <laughs> though I will say prequels are harder to do right. For example, I think it's going to be real easy for them to screw up the Kessel Run, and I might, oh, yeah. and I might prefer just my imagination of what that entailed. Right. I think that's kind of the heart of what he was implying. I wouldn't say that they always do, but I'd say I'd, I'd adapt his statement to say that prequels are 
prone mm -hmm. to doing that, to basically rendering original source material confusing or nonsensical because they directly contradict things that supposedly happened later. I always like the idea, and if you look at Obi-Wan's expression when Han says this in the movie, that Han Solo is just full of shit with that whole Kessel Run thing, and it's just coming up with total bullshit to just try and get you mean this, he's like, like you don't know that up. that's a unit of distance yeah basically time. and like just <laughs> i'm gonna throw out space words and impress this local like farm boy farm boy guy and he's gonna be super thrilled and like kind of guinness has like this eye rolling like yeah come on yeah he also had that attitude towards the entire movie sure the but i like the idea that han is just like yeah no kessel run 12 parsecs like that's my thing and obi-wan's just like don't give me this bullshit i and, actually and know luke what is like cool cool i'm gonna go bull that some more round wall prance. <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's like harrison told george when they were filming a new hope is george you can type this shit but you can't say it it's just <laughs> all made. Mm -hmm. so anyway i don't think this makes me feel any better yeah. about the Han solo movie we were yeah. having um it yeah, is I mean, what it, it is it, it, i think we were having this discussion not that long ago about like Having the Clone Wars explained and all that stuff I disagree, though. made it worse. It was like, for me. It, it made it worse but, because well, it, was, it was nothing at all like what I pictured. It takes yeah, out some of the but, mystery. Well, yeah, that's okay. The problem, well, let's clarify I what think. we're talking about because I'm talking about the Clone Wars TV series. The Clone Wars TV series in a vacuum is good. I'm just I'm, yes. The, no, that's not what we're talking about. Sorry. Um, they, like, I think me and Stu were talking about this, and Stu brought up the point that there was all these things that are like kind of brought up in A New Hope, where he's yeah. like, what, you fought in the Clone Wars? Mm -hmm. Like, Luke says that, right? And then it's like, they explained it, and it's like, not as good because they explained it. Whatever you could imagine. It wasn't as good yeah. as whatever right. it was yeah. imagining. It's, I think it's nice to have yeah. throwaway lines like, like that. Yeah. It's, bet, it's good to because have it, it makes the world feel stuff. bigger. Without having to see. Without having to do it, but also like... Things like that allow you to fill in the blanks of a relatively small story with kind of whatever you can come up with. Mm -hmm. And for me, the Clone War stuff was always disappointing. Not necessarily the show, but the Attack of the Clones. Well, when that first I, came which out, I, will 100 I was agree like, with. this that's... is like nothing at all like yeah. what I pictured when I was a kid. I mean, there's an implication when you say the Clone Wars that it was like, oh, it's the Republic fighting the clones. Yeah. That's always kind of what I thought. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think of it as like the yeah. Republic. I don't think the Republic stuff factored into it until they, later. They had barely mentioned the Republic and the New Hope up to that point. Yeah. Like, or even like, oh, it was the Empire fighting clones or something. Yeah. Who knows? Just what imagine something. if it was like but the Jedi were, fighting clones. Yeah, or you were fighting clones, not fighting with clones. Yeah. And we didn't we didn't know that clone was going to be well, one then, CGI character. Just yeah. copy, paste, copy, paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. Who's also Boba Fett? Nobody could have saw that coming. <laughs> yeah. I think that's part of why, like, Alfred Hitchcock movies are still pretty scary because he leaves yes. a lot to your imagination and what, yes. like, mm -hmm. what you're going to come I mean, up that's with yourself the essence of his is going to be, like, the scariest thing for you or, like, when you're imagining the Clone Wars, you're imagining the coolest thing for yeah. you, you know, and then when it's explained, if it's not the coolest thing, like, yeah, that was dumb. You it's know? why Stephen King horror books are really good up until, like, the last quarter of the book. Yeah, yeah, I must not be as creative as you guys because, like, again, not counting the movie, but the Clone Wars series, considering the whole thing, I enjoyed it and thought it was a pretty positive addition. There are some dumb throwaway episodes, but for the most well, part, it show. it provided a depth to the Clone Wars that I wouldn't have, you know. If you look at it as like just a small I piece like of like seeing... an entire universe, an expansion of that, but just like this is a small sliver of, then yeah. Sorry, Terry, we didn't I, mean to talk yeah, over I you that much. No, it's fine. That's what we do on this show is talk over each other. Um, <laughs> we're professionals. No, I like the Clone Wars series yep. also. Like, I, I enjoy that show quite a bit, you know, but it's, yeah. I, I like that it yeah. kind of took, it took something that was, I don't know, it, it did make, I think, the clone, whatever, the, is it episode two, Bone. Attack of the Clones? It made that a little bit better. Like having yes. the like like Commander Cody character fleshed Couldn't out a little bit and worse. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, way, yeah, well, it's not like it's difficult to build off of that to make it better. So I yeah. mean, the real problem was it's that episode bar. two ends with the start of the Clone Wars, and episode three starts with the, the end. end of them. Yeah. Like it's the end of one. The movie two begins, and then 
which you never see anything I mean, in the middle. That that was George's plan the entire yeah. time. He, I mean, yeah. disagree with it all you want, but he he had planned for the Clone Wars show. I mean, it's a transmedia there. experience. Yeah, I mean the the parts of the Clone Wars that I liked, they're all sort of independent of Star Wars as a whole. Yes, like there are parts of it that are good stories, good storytelling that are kind of an interesting show with interesting characters, but they all touch on a part of Star Wars history that I'd rather not think about and I'd rather forget. So I think of them sort of removed from Star Wars. So I say that show is great in a vacuum. Yeah. So tying it back to Han Solo, it's supposed to come out in May. I bet they push it to December and I hope to God it's just not terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the best we could hope for is that it's serviceable. I mean, the low bar is, is it better than episode one? Hell yeah, probably. Well, probably. Is it better than episode two and three? Yeah, probably. Disagree. Uh, episode two is worse than episode one. Episode two is the worst, <laughs> but I don't know if it'll be better than episode three, which I'm not saying three is good. I'm just trying to set my yeah. expectations that yeah. low. I mean, if it's yeah. worse than any of the three prequels, then it's a bad movie. I mean, if I it's agree. that if it's that bad, like that's not even like... That's that's just embarrassing as a movie. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Like that. I, honestly, if it comes out and it's that bad and it gets that kind of response, doesn't that kind of derail a lot of upcoming Star Wars spinoffs? Like I mean, they're locked in on. They're all kind of separated, couple. right? I think but we're doesn't have it to like start that start to one of these one of these spinoff movies is going to be is going to be bad. Like if you look at like the whole Marvel universe, they're not all the best things, they, but there they can't are really all be great hits. shows in that. Yeah. But they're all right? acceptable. Yeah. They're all worth watching. I mean, there's there's like one or two that are really kind of not good. Like Thor 2, pretty bad. Yeah, mm. Thor uh, I like Thor 2. I think yeah, Thor 2 is in this I slept through almost range. all of it. Yeah, I mean, Okay. You need maybe to be that. conscious. I mean, yes. Make no, a, a I, I'm not disagreeing with your point <laughs> overall. That, that there's going to be varying levels of quality, but I, I do think that all these standalones are going to be separate because right now they've they haven't they've announced a director, but they haven't formally signed you and McGregor for an Obi Wan standalone. See, I'd be down for that. Yeah. He's, he's kind that of the only part cool. of the prequels that I was into. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, and maybe he's the with best part a better director and better dialogue. Well, he can actually him be interesting. Oh. and when. Uh, Palpatine in McDermott just stops giving a fuck and he just goes <laughs> full crazy at the end of Revenge of the Sith. I think that's pretty uh, awesome. What if we got an Obi Wan on Tatooine? That was like uh, when they when Mace Windu goes to arrest Palpatine and then it's like Anakin try spinning. That's a good trick. And <laughs> yeah, yes, like, yes, yes. Like, yes. Mm. It's so good. <laughs> that is a good trick. <laughs> okay, so that's old. Like in Star Wars timeline movies, uh, since we've last recorded uh, and talked about movies, we've had the episode eight official trailer. Wait, drop. what, Eric? If you want to uh, cue this up and watch it along with us, I assume you've seen it before, Eric. I have seen it. <laughs> you not have to show up. No, I'm sorry. not think too much. About it. <laughs> <laughs> that made it sound like I'm not excited. Uh, I just think no, that no, there's I, a bunch of misdirection in there, and I don't want to overanalyze. Oh, there's it. so much misdirection in this. Well, we'll trailer. talk about it after we watch it. Yeah. All right, <laughs> loading it. On. Let me get it loaded. I changed my mind. <laughs> Getting loaded. Can yeah. you send me the link? And, and I don't have to yeah, it's in the it. Zencaster. Stu's just now oh, full on oh. pork. Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. There's so much Star Wars on my screen. Uh, I saw I Star think, Wars. <laughs> I think the porgs look awesome. That's all I'm gonna say. They look. I'm excited about them. Um, okay. Did you guys see the? Did you guys see the evidence that uh, Snoke is uh, Obi Wan Kenobi? We'll talk about that shit after. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> All right. What? For those right, for listening yeah, at we'll, home, we'll if you want to watch it, it with us, um, the official Star Wars Last Jedi trailer from Star Wars YouTube, and hit play in three, 30 two, million views. one. Ah! <gasps> when I found you, it's Matt, the radar technician. <laughs> it's it's the regular ape walkers, walkers. Yeah, I'm and then the, the big, big gorillas. Ones. Kylo with the clan. So much red. Something. Yeah. It's like it's going to be a recurring thing. I think it is. Yeah. 
<laughs> Lucasfilm? I oh, recognize that logo. Fuck. I remember them. I clapped when I saw it. I still think it's awesome. This is a real place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Then I was awake. I can't wait for Ray cannot simply in walk into Mordor. Unfortunately. The saber sounds match the music. That was cool. Yeah. I mean, they have really good editors. They better have good editors. Yeah. It does now. Crazy old man scared me. Crazy yeah. old Maurice. Let the past die. Nice space face band aid. I just want that to say oopsie on it. Kylo yeah. kind of looked like he had to poop there. Speaking of, <laughs> Kylo looks like that a lot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and here's the, the most misdirection is yeah, this, this part. This is so totally not happening. Right. Yeah, it's just. I mean, I could see that being a scene. It's gotta be such a scene. It's a scene, but he's not killing her there. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chewie looks weird, but then there's the Porg. Ugh. Uh, uh, burn out Slampo. Yeah. Mike, you can maybe appreciate this. Apparently, the Mon Cal cruiser that's in these shots is the uh, Radis. Going to go. Hmm. Nice. Is uh, is Phasma's Wolf. weapon there? Is it the giant spike that Robocop has that comes out of his gauntlet? What can only hope? In my head camera. Yeah. I think it's this more planet like looks a, sweet. I think it's more like a Valkyrie javelin. Let him a Snoke. I mean, I'd buy it for a dollar. To show me my place in all this. All right. <laughs> also, not the super same, misdirection. Not the same scene at all. No, no, probably not. Also, he doesn't but have I'm his like band aid thing in that scene either. I love his carbon. Oh, so it's like it's like his space band aid has healed his scar by the end of the movie when that's happening. or that's a flashback or whatever. I'm anyway, like, I'm really into the carbon fiber band. -aid. Yeah, no, I okay. mean it makes his his car go so, faster. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I can I can assume we all like the trailer. Yeah, it's a really yeah, well done yeah, trailer. I'm super it into it. Well I'm super into it, and it makes me yeah, it looks excited minus for the, the movie. Porgs. Stu, are you upset with porks because like they're your spirit animal? No, otters are my spirit animal, and they're a he total probably rip hates off of so the space otters. I, I did see a meme talking about porgs and like those uh, crystal dire wolves or whatever. Like this live action Pokemon movie looks awesome. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, so there was right, a, I saw a comic that was like Luke becoming a gray Jedi, and he's standing by this cliff with all these little porgs, and it's are like the the thing said at that moment is when Luke became a great Jedi and he just kicks one off the cliff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. So, so, Scott, you were talking about misdirection before that started, and there's a lot of it in there. What's oh, the first one you want to talk about? Uh, probably the earliest one, which I think is old man Hermit Luke talking about um, not, ne training. not seeing that kind of... There's only He's seen that power only once before. And the implication is like, oh, Ray's that powerful, but he's not going to train her. I think, no, he's just talking about something else. Who is he just... talking about? Kylo. Well, maybe Kylo, Kylo Ren. He is so not talking about Kylo. Why the fuck not? No. So, so, so it could be Kylo's the second power that he's seen. The first one could have been his father. Yeah, there we go. Who uh, else has frozen a blaster bolt in midair? Fucking true. nobody. I mean. That we've seen. Well, yeah, you guys exactly. don't know what I, I do mean, on like, the weekends, but I assume that, you know, that pretty you know, standard based Jedi on trick. the way films work, yeah. that <laughs> that's a that's I, an impressive feat. I don't think he's talking about Kylo. I think he's talking about either Vader or the Emperor, and he's still scared of like he's, yeah. he he has had time to think back and realize, oh shit, I was lucky to escape alive, and like. But I know, is where I think it is the misdirection is that it's not him being like, I'm not going to trade you, Ray. Yeah. Unless he's pulling like a that Yoda line business. That isn't even in the movie. They filmed it only for the oh, trailer. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You mean yeah, like the go. TIE fighter approaching? It, it won't be near as bad as the Rogue One trailer was yeah. just because they, they, like they had a few the planned CGI reshoots shots there. That they didn't do there. extensive reshoots. Yeah, they, they had a few yeah. planned reshoots, but not like near as many right. as they had for uh, Rogue One. But yeah, so we don't know who he's talking about. <laughs> for sure, yeah. And there's, there's definitely misdirection in that trailer, but... So much. I could see the obvious being the actual case same it's with uh, Thanks, same with the end with the near the end when kylo's barrel rolling around through that transport and doing his great it's trick between him and his mom panning back and forth and like he's he looks like he's he's having a, an internal struggle like 
it kind of I've been saying this for since since uh the force awakens came out like I don't think that he is capable of killing his mom like he did his dad could be and I think I oh I, I will bet all the money that Jed has that they only threw that in the trailer because Carrie died and mm-hmm. they want you to yeah. think that's how they're going to write her out of the movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's that, that, not a lot of money. Yeah, I well, agree with that. I'm, I'm flat out broke now. Still wasn't going to use my own. So. I mean, it would involve no physical, like actual acting. All of that could be done in CGI. Mm-hmm. Like you could yeah. see the ship launching a torpedo, and then you could see a CGI recreation of her standing on the bridge, and then boom, explosion, and she's gone. I, I will it'd be super easy to do, but it'd be. Eh. I will be very upset if that's how they do it. Though, yeah, because they showed I, it in the trailer. That's too cheap. I, yeah, yeah, I don't like the idea of that being like him actually pressing the button and launching the torpedo and killing her. Um, it'll be. Like, I think he'll. Well, it'll be a situation where he pulls away at the end, and yeah, he pulls know. away. Somebody else takes the shot. Ooh, Ooh, could be. Maybe. That's that's pretty good. It could be maybe pose on his tail. I, I pulls st- away to avoid, and that. I still fully believe that that Leia survives awesome. this movie. And what they, did you say? I, I think Le- Leia survives this movie, and they either she address she it to. off yeah. screen or. They address I, it in the title crawl. I, 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 I'm still oh, holding right. out. Recast the character. Just do it well. No, so you freeze frame, and then you put in a badly dub of Carrie Fisher, like a fake dub of Carrie Fisher, and she says, I'm sorry, my home planet needs me. And then, like, you very <laughs> obviously <laughs> pull her up. The animation <laughs> Except you don't take her when she's acting as Leia. You go back to, like, her, um, oh, her wishful Blues drinking Bro- comedy specials. Yes. No, her, her voice. Yeah, it's Blues Brothers. Is her that Blues Brothers yeah. with the RPG. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. You guys, watch the original Blues Brothers. That movie's great. It is oh, it is amazing. So it has one of the best car chases ever filmed. The, the most expensive car chase. Pull back as well. a little bit. Here's my hot. Is it take still the on... most expensive car chase? Yes. Because you don't do car chases in practical anymore. Yeah. I guess that's I think true. The new they Mad did. Max movie disagrees. Mm. That's another. Maybe. That's another. Yeah, thing. that's another thing. Hot take from Stu. Hot Google. take on the ice foxes and porgs. Yes. So here, here's my deal. They're very toyetic. I I dig the ice fox design. Mm-hmm. It looks, you know, like something that could exist in a sci-fi universe. Is it a better alternative to Chrome? <laughs> uh, no. Fuck you. <laughs> but I don't like how obvious the CG is on it. Yeah. And That's then, something that can on the, get on more the passes. Ice box? Yeah, I mean, we only see it for a second. It might just be like those few frames that mm-hmm. kind of really stand yeah. out, but the the shining and you know, like sort of iridescent and, effects on it really stand out as fake. And, and White I, is I also can, the hardest like background to do right. CG. I, I can get behind that, but we we do know that there are some practical effects from that from the behind for, the scenes for sure. Video. There will mm-hmm. it, there will be tons of practical effects. S- same, same with the porgs. Like yeah, yeah and it, I, it's going to be a mix. I saw those images of the. Practical Porgs, mm-hmm. and I, I still that's my new band name. I practical still Porgs. can't I help like but but really not like their design because they like their proportions and everything. They look like a cartoon creature that they made an animatronic out of. Yes, and that's what's pulling me out of it. I don't mind there being cutesy creatures and stuff. Like I really, I still like the Ewoks. You but, want another like? But it doesn't look like something that fits the star wars aesthetic you want it a little looks bit like more something... space between the concept drawing and the right it, it looks like thing. something that like they pulled out of rebels and then put irl yeah okay like it's it just it really kind of sticks out to my eye it's like oh that's a weird looking animal and not like in a weird sci-fi way just in a, like a that looks like a cartoon that they put in real life and that's how i and, feel and, about and, it. and you know, everyone's got their own opinion, and I see where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. We're probably arguing over the only screen time they get in the entire movie. And I, was, sure. I was saying this to somebody on Slack the other day, but I, I'm i sure I'll actually like the Porgs, because they look endearing as fuck. Porgs are the new triples. But I'm it, excited it, for when they just swarm somebody and just... <laughs> With right, when like, away and it's just a skeleton. When like they do the <laughs> and then yeah. like the lips peel back and it's got like four rows of shark teeth and you're or, like, oh Jesus! Or right yeah. after that is when Chewie eats it. Oh, that'd be pretty oh, good. <laughs> what gets me is is how jarring it is in comparison with the tone of this trailer. Like, right. this is the middle entry of a trilogy where everything gets it's really dark. dark. Like it's every other part of this trailer road. is really dark, yeah. and then it's just like, here's this cute thing. Yeah, I, I would agree with you if this was Oh, robot tater. Loud noises. Hold on, tater. 
Hold on. Yeah. Adjust. You're you're still robot-y. Still? Nope. You're good. Yeah. Right. Now you're that good. sounds good. Okay. So let's be real here. Star Wars is not to tell us a good story. It is to sell us toys. So they have to and show us what toys we're going to be able to buy soon. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And you're 100% right. And, and, and Stu, I would agree with you uh, if this was the first time we saw the Porgs. Like if it was just random animal, you know... Um, just like suddenly right there in the trailer. Uh, I, I'm betting they added that once they saw the online reaction to the Porgs from the behind the scenes trailer and the oh, other yeah. places we've yeah. already seen them. Yeah. When they're like, oh, really? This thing's already taken off? Well, shit, throw it in all the trailers we can. We need the six seconds yeah. that that thing's on screen <laughs> in the shot. In yeah, the trailer it definitely, now. like looking at the online response to this trailer, I, I, I know that I'm in the minority. Most Star Wars fans are all about that, this. I just don't. See, like it. and I, I'm, I'm not excited about the porgs but i'm like okay cool. i'm it's way more thing. into uh black bb8 yeah fuck yeah bb9 e or something yeah. like that the e is for evil well, well, <laughs> yeah. uh, ryan johnson tweeted i i think it was him said i originally named him bbh8 bb8 so good <laughs> yeah bb9 e <laughs> so, like, just uh, put a curly mustache on it. And they they just, also uh-huh. give us the Finn and Phasma fight we should have gotten in episode seven. Yes, mm-hmm. with yeah. more lightning. Apparently, I'm all about it. I kind of wish I didn't see any of it in the trailer. Mm-hmm. You, you see Finn with his energy axe, just like that, fold out, and then a few scenes later, right. you see Phasma with her Valkyrie javelin pop out, and we don't connect the two of them to see that they're fighting each other. Mm. Or just I, not maybe, have that all, at all. I don't know. It, it, it looks happening. like a little bit of oversharing. Could be. Actually, Could that's be. all a Finn coma dream. It's the movie's going to open with that, and he then it's going to like a real badass. Yeah, and then it's just going to be like it. zoom out a bit, and then he wakes up from his coma and just like what? No. Oh, he defeats and then unmasks Phasma, and then like it's his own head. <laughs> yeah. And then he wakes up like. Ah. Yeah. No, it's Poe. Oh. Takes off the helmet at his ponies, goes, No! My and then, boyfriend. like, wakes up. Yeah. God, that'd be so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this trailer avoided, I don't want to say they're major parts because we haven't seen the movie, we don't know, but they've, up until now, they've pushed the Rose storyline. Uh, Kelly Marie Tran is the actress that she's teaming up with Finn to go undercover at some point. One in this trailer. And Benicio del Toro is in this movie. Yeah, his character he's named not DJ. Really who wasn't in that? He wasn't in that yeah, at all. I've seen like movie stills of mm-hmm. him, like production shots, but not in the. And, and that's about all we've ever gotten of him. He's teaming up with Howard the Duck, and <laughs> oh shit, yeah. I mean, it seems like he's got you know the beginning of the song. trailer. You've got Kylo looking over this like production facility, yeah. and it looks like that's the same place that's blowing up during the Phasma fight. So it yeah. looks like they're infiltrating whatever this facility is. To create something. I mean, I kind of hope it's like their Super Star Destroyer equivalent. Well, they already showed that, right? The, the Snoker Star the, Destroyer? Yeah, yeah, the Snoke like, flagship deal that's it's supposed to be like a million bajillion billion. times bigger. Yeah. Than... <laughs> it looks cool. It looks like a, Fuck like it, a make giant it bigger. Is the Empire going to learn that like just making things bigger isn't necessarily going to make it better? A nice explanation I saw that was pretty cool, because apparently it has like manufacturing bays and a shipyard on it that's cool okay the implicate yeah, uh, maybe the, that's the, where those the, shots are yeah the rationale i saw for that was hey this is actually the first order like they don't oh, now yeah. that star killer base oh, is gone is they kind of don't what's have left anything of them yeah like the, they have that the and they have star killer base center yeah. and manufacturing center that could, and then like they have that. like six star that. destroyers and that's kind of it Plus, they're not that big but they have this thing. That's... That would that would make for an easy way to bring everybody back together again by the end, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you see like Ray getting fucking wrecked by Snoke at the end. Yeah, um, who is that's his ship. Yeah, mm-hmm. so she and Luke presumably, maybe independently of everybody else's efforts, also go there. to yeah. this place for their own reasons. It'd be a cool way and to have like a maybe climax. they all escape together after Ray gets her shit wrecked, mm-hmm. and is sort of episode. Seven ish, or not seven, five empire. Like, yeah. You know, when they all sort of 
reconvene oh, my, God, minus Han. I hope there's nothing similar to Empire. The Snoke Star Destroyer is the Cloud City equivalent. Not because I, yeah, because I, I, don't, because I will care, but I don't want to fucking listen to Brody <laughs> bitch about that. Oh, I mean, I don't want it to Empire. be a direct parallel because they, they already made the best film in that. the entire series. But you know, there's it makes sense for the penultimate entry in a trilogy no, yeah, to do to- totally. something like that to bring everybody back together after dividing them so that they can yeah. all converge for the third one mm-hmm. and you know take down the bad guys so take down snoke mm-hmm. tater you got anything no there's actually a more evil after snoke uh it's oh yeah snoke we gotta talk about how snoke is you and is actually obi-wan <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, tell me about this bullshit. There's a picture yep. showing him he's doing the two finger point that Obi Wan does in like Revenge <laughs> of the Sith. So he just knows that lightsaber style. That was it. He have that, a was, body that was it. It was just both of the fingers circled and it was like solid evidence. Snoke is Obi Wan. Oddly enough, though. Well, that's you could like... say he's the stormtrooper who clocked his head. Uh, on the doorway in the yeah. New Hope because of the scar on his head. Both of these have more evidence supporting them than your Ezra Snoke. I know, and that one's looking less and less likely. <laughs> Shit. You got my hopes up so much that, like, Obi-Wan came back. Like, that's this is how he came back even more powerful. And it'd be perfectly and it's t- not just the yeah. Force Ghost. And it'd be perfectly timed where it's just like, and now you know. And then next summer, it's the Obi-Wan movie where you can find out the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be awesome. So, so I had one other thing I wanted to talk about. Like the Obi Wan movie takes place between episodes eight and nine. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> God. Yeah. So, do, do these do these things happen? Does Kylo get redeemed slash move towards the light? Yes. Does Ray go dark? No. I, I, because go ahead. If, if Kylo gets redeemed, I'm going to be fucking pissed. You don't oh. ki- you don't kill Han Solo and get redeemed unless Han fuck. did All it. Right. So normally I don't like to invoke this um, novelization of Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Says, you know, he was he was told that if he did this, it would help him tap into that power and and really become more powerful. And when he did, as soon as he drove that lightsaber through his dad, he felt weaker and crushed. I I, I listened to that. I don't remember that part, so I can't angrily reply to you right now but, I, mean, I didn't but, read but, it but I, I just saw it on a YouTube video it, That's it, not bad. and that, that, that could be the case but I th- this is more just personal you don't fucking kill Han Solo and get to come back and be a good guy I mean there's also this would be kind of stupid but there's also the possibility that it's like a Snape kills Dumbledore kind of situation where it was agreed upon and yeah like you know, I he like whispers something. One. Han's yeah. face did not look like he agreed. No, right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like they could have also Han's a good actor. <laughs> he's he's one of the few they have. <laughs> I'm really, he doesn't pull his punches. I'm really curious about that agreed upon thing, though. Like, what what would that benefit? Like, how what would that do? Han to get him close dead? to Snoke to kill Snoke. It would it would remove any type of misgivings that the First Order has towards. Kylo. So, yeah. so if it happens, and we, we talked about this I, again in Slack like last week, if it happens, he has to die. He, yeah, he, he can't. No. He can't survive. It has to be like Vader. He redeems himself in death. Well, I mean, I, that's also kind of poetic in that he idolizes Vader, and so that's he idolizes the heroic sacrifice at his end. But then I feel that gets into unoriginal territory. Yeah. Yeah, but it's but the it's like circular poetry. part as well. Yeah, yeah it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so here's my selfish want for for Kylo's arc because he's my favorite character. I'm a huge Avatar: The Last Airbender fan. I want him to be Zuko. I want, okay. I want him to what does that mean? help out at the end. I want him to have a redemptive arc, not necessarily die. Though I could get on board with that argument. Zuko does um, kill his father at the end. Um, and no, he doesn't. He helps take him down. Right, Sorry. but like coming in. Helping our true hero, Ray, training her to learn our new true techniques. Hero, BB-8. Our true hero, the Porgs. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't necessarily have to do training and stuff, Porg but I do want him nine. to redeem himself and even potentially spend a large chunk of episode nine being on the side of good. Everybody We've already seen that up. he's conflicted. Yes. And it looks like this movie's you know misdirection and everything from the trailer it looks like it's really pushing that angle of he is really conflicted yeah 
Yeah, or uh, always looking like he has to poop, like you said. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason you named your kid after him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Kylo's always got to poop. I, I don't want Kylo to get redeemed, okay. but I am cool with Ray going dark, and those two end up teaming up being bad guys. That could be interesting. Well, then who's the hero? Yeah. Fucking Luke. He's gonna go kill all these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Old man Luke. Oh shit! My class just so episode nine is actually Logan, but it's Luke. <laughs> oh, oh shit! shit. That's shit. exactly what I want now. <laughs> and it ends. It ends with a new cover of Hurt. Yeah. Not yeah. Like Johnny Cash. <laughs> it's Somebody actually else. Nine Inch Nails doing a cover of Johnny Cash's cover yeah. of, of Hurt. <laughs> it's just Gary Fisher's barks just oh, edited fuck. together for that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I made myself sad. <laughs> uh, who's directing episode nine now? That's right. JJ, listen to us when you're writing episode nine. <laughs> Oddly enough, Jennifer Garner is now in episode nine. Fucking really? <laughs> no. Good. <laughs> She's the lady. No, but uh, Snoke is actually going to be the smoke monster at the end. Snoke? Smoke? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. It was there all along. It was so obvious. So before we move on, tell to me this, about the numbers. Uh, anything else on episode eight and the trailer? Taylor? No. No. <laughs> I just didn't. I, I just didn't want to move on to nine before and like leave any eight opinions. Well, yeah, I was just going to say. I, I, I was trying not to form. I'm just going to say. Um, about it. I want to sit and just enjoy it without thinking about yeah. it too much. Um, so. How dare you? <laughs> I know. But he's wrong. I mean, he's me. going to be four deep before the. That's Start true. Rolling, so. Goddamn right. right. We're not going so, to movies, so I'll be so gonna drink, for the first show. Still gonna drink before? Yeah, though. you're not gonna pregame. You're not gonna bring a flask. I mean, probably, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm probably gonna bring a flask. So moving on, to episode nine. I was just gonna say, we all know how this goes down. Kylo redeems himself in the death, but he taints Ray in some nice. way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> and and the gray Jedi Order, which is what we go on to, is going to be more actual, on the light side than like true a good balance to the force. So yeah, but it's going to be more on the light side than an that. actual like down the center. Like that's what it's going to be. The having emotion is good, but so, like, so right? Snoke Reason is will prevail. Evil. Snoke is Liam Neeson. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Colin uh, Trevorrow, he directed Jurassic World, which I thought was a pretty good movie. It's made a lot. Got yeah, a shit ton of money, it but. made like over a billion dollars. It, it, it's not a perfect like cinematic experience Academy Award, but it's a good movie. You have a few drinks and you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Um, without the drinks, well, uh, he margaritas. Got, he got let go uh, from episode differences. nine. Creative differences, which I think all comes back to uh, Carrie Fisher dying. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. I'm kind of on board with you there. I'm sure they liked his original vision mm-hmm. and they couldn't well, get on the same page adapting after clearly she Clearly they liked his original yeah. vision because he was on board for that long. So so they let him go. They offer it to Ryan Johnson who did episode eight and he's like, oh, man, I he, thought that would have been a good yes. call. And, yes. and, mm-hmm. But, you know, I you can't fault the guy for being like, you know, I need a break after yeah. doing episode eight. Yeah. Getting involved in the whole Disney mm-hmm. machine. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or just being fucking tired from doing a Star Wars movie for two years yeah. straight. They offered to it to him, and he was like, all right, so it starts with Bruce Willis going back in time. And they went, nope, sorry. <laughs> Hang on. But, but first, somebody tells him that a great way to remedy time travel is to take your shoes off and scrunch your toes in carpet. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You ask me. It's a die hard, die hard oh, okay. reference. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I was still thinking through. Like, I've never actually seen Looper, so I don't know. You that should was, see uh, Looper. You should see Looper. I'll yeah, let you borrow I, it. I, and yeah. I've heard it's good. I'm not like hating it. I just haven't gotten around to it. But after Ryan Johnson turned him down, they go to J.J. Abrams, which you know, safe pick. Yeah, but he helped them successfully relaunch the series. But mm-hmm. it is somewhat divisive among fans and among 3.2 company. Mm-hmm. Uh, my biggest complaint is JJ can't end things. That bad. At, I'm, on, he's, I'm on board with that. He's bad at coming to conclusions. Yeah, it seems like he's good at launching things, yes. and then when he tries to explore them further, he just kind of gets lost in his own well. minutia. And so, so, I will somewhat agree with you. The, the, the arguments I've seen for that have all been TV, where he like starts season one, then is less involved, and then people don't like how it ends. I would, I would bring up. Star Wars or Star Trek Into Darkness, yes, which, which is fair. Great, yeah. Not 
as good as the first one, I still think it's fine. But that 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 is a fair criticism. I I'll, I will counter that with Ten Cloverfield Lane, which was actually which, which really fucking. I good. really liked, but there's a lot of people who didn't like it. Well, fuck them. I'm not one of them. <laughs> no, I, I agree. J, JJ is not without criticism. That's not what I'm trying to say. But um, you know, he he's who 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 we're stuck with for episode nine. Um, shit, I had another point to go. I mean, with there that. there are. Definitely worse filmmakers out there. Oh, yeah. There sure. were a lot of worse choices, yep. yeah. And yeah, we could go as Denmark UA Shyamalan. Bowles, episode nine. As long as it doesn't get all. It doesn't become the JJ show with, like, potentially fucking Lindelof okay. giving him advice and shit. Like, there's a solid chance that it'll still be really good. Uh, I, I remember we'll we're get more Greg Grunberg. <laughs> we're we're going to get more Greg Grunberg. <laughs> I, I remember we'll also if he has any input on the story. Disney might already have it just so, finished. So, yeah, so yeah, JJ you know. is going to co-write it with his okay. name is Chris Terrio, who had uh, he won an Academy Award for writing Argo. Okay, okay, which I've not seen, but I some word Netflix like wrote Argo. Well, co-wrote. He directed. Mm. Co-directed. Oh, okay. Uh, so he's got a co-writer, and he's who can write dialogue, and, by the way. Who can write dialogue, and he's building off of Ryan Johnson's middle act. So right. it might be easier to close this out. Yeah, no, I think I think if if episode eight sticks the landing, it'll make it that much easier for nine to just launch off of it. Mm-hmm. Now let's just go with the original view of Return of the Jedi. Call up David Lynch. Oh fuck! Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have sucked. Holy shit! Oh man, Mike, you can just fuck right off. Yeah, brainwave. <laughs> the bo- the pork now talks backwards. <laughs> Does a weird little dance. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we threw this in our show notes because we thought Brody would be here when we talked about it, and we thought we would actually come to blows over this. So we might talk about it again. We knocked later. him all the way to France. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm eating snails and drinking cheap wine. Oh, God, I shit. wish I was doing that. Yeah, and some cheese, baby. Yeah, bread, cheese, wine, and snails. The last time I went to France, the only thing I ate the entire time I was there was bread. Great. Great fact. I was like 10 years old and I was like, ew, gross. I don't like any of this food. French bread, week straight. I believe you. Yeah, I, can see <laughs> I mean, that, that also <laughs> sounds pretty good. Is that drinking <laughs> age over there, too? <laughs> and then I had that uh, Scott Pilgrim moment where I was like, bread makes you fat? <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> I still don't know that, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that it for movies? Yeah, yeah, I think I, I don't have any big points to bring up. Okay, so Scott, you and I watched the premiere episodes of season four, the final season of Rebels, yep. right? Yep. Uh, I fucking hated them. How about you? Uh, so let me preface this by saying I love Sabine. Did Sabine they, is one um, of my favorite characters. These episodes suck. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Did they release them like at the same time? Yes. Yeah, just back to back. Because they're back to back episodes. They're a single story. It was like one. a one hour thing. Okay. Does the yeah. trailer give you hope for the rest of the season? The, no. the trailer the trailer does give me hope for the rest of the season. Did they say how many episodes this season's getting? I think it's gonna be another like twenty two, twenty three so, sta- standard. You know, pretty big T V mm-hmm. season. Okay. which there's uh, as Rebels goes, there's gonna be some garbage episodes. Yeah. And I don't think these are the garbage throwaways. No, I think that's these are problem. missteps. Yeah, is, the problem is, is that, that is these not are not garbage. These are not the throwaway episodes. Like it. Mm-hmm. I think there was potential in this, and I think you could have done it in one episode and made it better. And I think you could do a couple different. There are, there are, like you can see the outline, and the outline is good, and the the story, like the story beats, are interesting, and where you go to. But I mean. Like, the whole thing with Sabine's, like, weapon that she built when she was, like, a kid. Sabine's, like, a freshman in high school, and she designs a super weapon. It basically, it makes Sabine a Mary Sue. Yeah, like, more than she already is. Yeah. No, I but also just, uh, at the same time, like Ezra is even more of a Mary Sue in this episode, and mm-hmm. kind of so is Kanan. I was just going to say in that thumbnail oh, God. for the like, official trailer, it looks like uh, Callus is kind of getting yeah. his Jamie Lannister on. Yeah, he is. <laughs> um, I feel like a good third of these episodes is Ezra like, I don't know how to use a jetpack, but somehow I'm taking out more stormtroopers than all the Mandalorians. Yeah, like, welcome to Disney XD. Yeah. Which, to to an extent, I can get around, it was worse in these two episodes. Like, they Mm. even 
And I noticed this when I was watching it because I was so out of paying attention. Like the music cues change when Ezra's on screen to be way more goofy. Yeah, like you might as well have put that in there. Like it's got way more horns and it's weird. And then it's like shift to more serious. Sabine's dad is in Just trouble wait. and we need to Just protect wait. her. Bra, 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 I'm going to move. I've got a goofy thing here. Brief pullback to episode eight. When Snoke is on screen, probably near the end, it's going to be that music, but like eight hundred percent slower. Oh, and God. Like, oh, oh, oh! Is and Snoke Mike will have <laughs> and Mike will have an aneurysm in the theater as we're sitting next to him. Is Snoke Ezra and his head is just from a jetpack accident? Oh my God! Maybe. Ooh. Yeah. There we go. So, so season four is not off to a good start. The trailer showed parts I am excited to see. Yeah, and, and, and fa- I will say a positive from these first two is they wrap up this shitty Sabine super weapon story arc in two episodes. And also get Sabine out of like this whole Mandalorian thing. Like she passes it off to somebody else so she can be with the crew and you can get away from this Spoiler, story. But I don't care. Bo-Katan from Clone Wars comes in Hell's and takes yes. over Which one is he? Uh, she. She, she was uh, Princess or Duchess Satine's uh, sister, the red haired one. Oh, mm. yeah. I, w- I was into that, that plot line. It, it, in the Clone Wars, that plot line was sweet. Yes. Re- Rebels shit all over it. But, but we get a return to her, to characters from that taking more prominence in the Mandalorian stuff. Is there more um, Saw? We yeah, haven't seen Saw, Saw yet. is coming this oh, season. So he'll be yeah. in this season. Saw and his supporting cast from Rogue One, actually. Yeah. So, like oh, some so of his alien compatriots. Of his so it's going to get gory. Uh, the tentacle monster is going to show up, I'm sure. I hope not. No, um, Scott, that's a fanfiction.net tentacle monster that you're thinking oh, of, geez. and that's okay. not going to show up. All right. Okay, so I don't think we need to spend any more time on, on Rebels. We'll talk about it periodically if there's exceedingly good or exceedingly bad episodes, I guess. But The feeling in the episodes that one Mandalorian is the most, like, flat, like... Oh, I'm just going to help the Empire. No, 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 no. Fuck Mandaloria, even though I'm a Mandalorian. I like, li- literally did not know who you were talking about because he was that forgettable. Yeah, he's terrible. It's just garbage. And then, then like, they turn the weapon to where it works against stormtroopers. Reverse the polarity. It's going to attack. And then they destroy it. They're like, hey, we got this weapon that targets stormtroopers but doesn't kill them. It just incapacitates them across a watt, like the size of a Star Destroyer. We should destroy it so that it doesn't get used. Never comes up again. Yeah, exactly. And, and like the lightning shooting out from this weapon, it's totally Ark of the Covenant lightning yes. from uh, Raiders, uh-huh. like going through everybody. It's like, oh, you've got the wrong armor on. You're getting lightning through the chest as Don't it's chained. It. <laughs> and it's just like, shut your eyes. We have this amazing weapon that can only target stormtroopers and leaves everyone else safe. We should get rid of this and destroy it. That's so they bad writing. Destroy it. Yeah, it's pretty shitty. This couldn't be yeah. used in the movies. We must destroy it. So that's enough of Rebels. Uh, dear listener, go that's check horrible. out the trailer. It looks pretty neat. <laughs> it's bad. I, I have hopes that this that the series ends well. I like almost convinced with like most of them dying. The yeah. And then I talk with you guys, and I'm like, yeah, I don't need to worry about trying to get it. And watch it. The good episodes are good. That's the thing. It's like the good episodes are really good at their core. Like if you strip away like a lot of the Mary Sooness, yeah, I do like a lot of the characters and concept. It's just I like a few of them. It's where the application comes in. Like when Kanan got blinded, I was like, this could be really interesting for his character. And instead, it's just like he's even better as a Jedi now. It's like now that he's man. not held back by having vision. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's like Daredevil, the worst Marvel superhero. Hey, Daredevil's fucking no, awesome. He has a disability, not no. a superpower. <laughs> worst Marvel know. superhero, according to the cinematic, is uh, Iron Fist. He's, Ooh, he's yeah. so bad I haven't even watched his show. Yeah, yeah Danny um, Rand, piece of shit. Yeah, Daredevil's awesome. I'm take trying that to back. think of actually. I shitty. will never take that back. Fuck Daredevil. Only from video game experience. You wouldn't have the Ninja Turtles if not for Daredevil. True. Okay. <laughs> I have some VHSs, Mike. Mike, I have some VHSs for you to borrow. They are horribly great. Do you have a VCR Daredevil for him to borrow? Turtles. Three turtles. The three, the original Secret of the Ooze and Turtles in Time. Okay, yeah, no, those are great. 
Gun me- doesn't mean Daredevil's time. not shit. No, oh, those turtles themselves time. justify no, Daredevil. Secret of the Ooze is also really Secret bad. Secret of the Ooze is fucking awesome. Are you kidding me? When was the movie last time fight? You <laughs> That's our new podcast. We'll be launching Movie Fight in all caps with a three exclamation marks. Except we won't, because that's a popular YouTube show. Oh, uh, damn oh shit, so I need to change the episode title. We'll just spell it with a Y. No, no one cares about our podcast. Okay. Uh, it's Movie Fight, but Fight is spelled with a PH. A Y and apostrophe movie as well. Movie Fighter. <laughs> hey, fight? check this shit out. Bam. Now I my clapped. Cast, I clapped. You burnt. <laughs> uh, Scott, a couple episodes ago, you uh, just came up with a contest in the middle of the episode. <laughs> sure, yeah, because I I don't know. We hadn't had a contest. Here's yeah. when you make yeah, good Yeah, the best that. was <laughs> yes. Yes. justice at all. And then all of a sudden, oh, I guess we're doing a contest now. <laughs> you could have cut that out in editing. It would have been fine. Blame but I didn't. So it happened. <laughs> and one lucky listener. Well, one lucky listener. One, actually. Yeah, oh. we, we got a few lists in to deal with the uh, shit fuck spam list. That uh, ran rampant over our tournament. Uh, so let's look at some of these lists, shall we? Um, the main idea being that you have to be able to beat three uh, Azatuck gunships that have expertise, reinforce every round, and do two, not two care them, for your crits. Two of them have tactician and one has three PO. No, they all have tactician. Oh, mm-hmm. that's... Two, two of, of them, them have breach specialist. Two that, of them that, that's also has all three of them have breach specialist. Two have tactician. One oh, has okay. Three PO. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so they all have tactician, breach specialist, and three PO. Okay. Yes. So yeah. it's all bullshit. 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 So bullshit. no cares for crits. Bullshit. Putting stress. They have fully modded shots. Almost. Glad I didn't make the top eight at that tournament. Yeah, it was not fun well, playing against that list. I yeah, I'm uh, really glad I didn't beat you. How many people damage, would say the like, same thing I about guess you? I did two damage that turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've got a few lists. Uh, one of them sent in by Delmar. Delmar Rusty. Oh, okay. Uh, he's got his first list, which is Vessery with TIE-D, Tractor Beam, VI, Guidance Chips, Cruise Missiles. Uh, the Inquisitor with v- TIE V1, Juke, and Cruise Missiles. And Omega Leader with Juke, Twin Ion, and Com Relay. Omega Dickhead. <clears throat> so, here's the question. Does Omega Leader get through Reinforce? Yes, it's a modification. Counts as a dice. modification. Okay. So, he gets through. So, yes? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. well, I didn't know that. So, that's already better than I thought. And he shuts down the one of aid you can roll. So, that's not bad with Juke. Because they're not taking a focus. Yeah. So that's all right. Uh, cruise missiles at high PS is also decent. Uh, tractor beams, interesting. It could it could work pretty well. Uh, the Inquisitor with Juke. I so if you use tractor beam on the 3PO one, you take away his ability. Because you have to roll dice for 3PO yep. to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you hit, hit him with... Tractor beam and wait, what's the PS on these? They're all they're eight. all eight. So so you could do tractor beam then cruise missile on the three PO carrying ship. Yeah. That's um, not a bad list. Yeah, you can, uh, I you mean, can my... tractor beam it, then hit it with Vessery, right? Because it's tied D. Yeah, and then cruise yeah. missile it. <clears throat> yep, and then the Inquisitor and uh, the and Omega Leader can pound on him. Where with a tractor beam and thus no agility and the reinforce doesn't actually kick in for Omega Leader. The two dice on Omega Leader can actually matter. push through. Yeah. The Inquisitor's got his three dice, plus he's turning down one evade in case there is one. Um, does Reinforce add an evade result, or does Reinforce just... It adds an evade result, it right? It adds an evade. So can you juke the Reinforce now? You could. So, hmm. so then the Inquisitor's also... That's not bad. I think that, um, I think that, that now that we've that, talked through it, that's better than I thought on first yeah, read. That it's a good. reoccurring theme on these lists. Do the only, the only automatic evade. Sort of, mm-hmm. The only sort of feedback I'd give on this list is swapping out Juke on the Inquisitor for Push. Because yeah. you're going to want all of those reposition actions yes. yeah. to get out of those arcs. Um, Does it have the points for it? If you take the cruise missiles off, okay, you yeah. do. I think what mm-hmm. he was planning on doing was moving and like really hit hitting them really hard with the ordnance. 
hitting one really hard. Yeah, hopefully then, crippling it or taking it out, and then just using the juke to pick apart the rest of it. I think two cruise missiles yeah. isn't enough to take down or no. really hurt one of them. So you could I, I, the Inquisitor. It's not critical that he has cruise missiles because no, he's he mostly doing push. those hard ones and stuff. Mm-hmm. Give him the push the limit. Um, an alternative, not necessarily better or worse, but I think an alternative to the tractor beam tie D would be an ion tie D. That one's also pretty Because there's a guaranteed damage if you hit. Mm-hmm. And denying them the ability to do hard turns and like really sweep those huge arcs around yeah. could be really nasty. Getting them out of formation helps yeah. a lot. Um, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, it's a better list than you would think looking at it. From the start, I like that list. It's not bad. It's okay. an imperial list with a lot of synergy, and that's kind of fun. That could be a fun list to play too. So. List two, I look at the first ship, and I immediately turn my brain off. Sure. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's Captain oh, Nim man. with engine, crack shot, auto blaster, bomblet, advanced sensors, genius. Um, Which no- normally you see, it's Nim. You put Vi, but we. The bounty was specifically for this triple Ozotuck yeah. list, so you don't need VI, so crack shot right. is fine then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Ahsoka with Captured Tie, Sabine's Masterpiece, Adaptability Up 1, uh, Sabine as the crew with Scavenger Crane and Thermal Detonators, um, and then a Gray Squadron with uh, BTLA, TLT, Bomb Loadout, Stress Bot, and Thermal Detonators. So, so that, that's the PS4 Gray Squadron, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So you're shooting before. Okay. So yeah. everybody shoots a lot ahead. Of, a lot of stress control, which yep. is good against that expertise that yep. they all have. Yeah. Uh, Ahsoka can't get shot at until she's the last one on the board. Yeah, as long as she's not shooting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which doesn't include bombing, right? Right. She can yeah, bomb she could bomb. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, Nim. Is, yeah, so there's a lot of bombs. So that's actual. That's damage that gets past your reinforce. Like it doesn't care. Um, stress bot, Ahsoka. Um, and you can you can stress like two of them in a single round if you yeah. if you catch them. Yep. So it's true. That would be really good for your defensibility because he's also shooting ahead of time too. So mm-hmm. you just shut down that expertise, and then it's unmodified dice. So yeah, so that's not bad. I'm a little that's skeptical about uh, Nim. The damage Nim, output that you're actually Nim getting going up against those because, like, he was taking apart people's Nim list too. Nims, yeah, like yeah, people had basically the same Nim without the crack shot. Yeah, and he didn't even care, you know. Yep. yep. So Nim is a I mean, sacrifice I didn't, to I didn't the Ashia Fuck Gods. It Maybe. it could have been stuff like. They were like, oh, they just like ran in front of it or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. You know. But yeah, lo- a fair number of names died. So. Yeah. Uh, we have a list from Michael. Um, he has a Dash Rendar. Two lists. Okay, so he has two lists. So he has a Dash Rendar with Calculation, Mangler Cannon, Mercenary Co Pilot, Outrider, and Engine Upgrade. So he's just looking for crits, which. I mean, the problem with that is the the, the breach specialist says, "Ha, funny." Grits. Maybe I mean, <clears throat> I'm I'm not in his head or anything, but maybe it's specifically with with the intention of him spending those breach specialists oh, so, for the round, oh. and then having the green squadrons come in and okay, yeah. Take them so apart he's got that's not bad. He's got greens with juke, uh, stealth device, and snapshot. Chardin. Okay. Okay, I see that idea. That if you can get him to spend the breach specialist early, then it doesn't Snapshot's happen. not bad either, because that's before yeah. they can reinforce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's true. And then you juke down any like actual thing. Natural got. evades, yeah. yeah. And also, by the way, you have four defense dice with an evade token. Mm-hmm. So That's not bad. You can take some punishment or at least yeah. stand up to some. Yep. Um his other list is an Omega Squadron pilot. That's the first order. I assume that's the PS5. Or something. Uh, I think so, because it's got the EPT. It, I think it's yeah. four. Yeah. Uh, four or five, four. yeah. Mm. Uh, Juke, Comrade, Stealth Device. He's got two of them with Major Striden, Sensor Jammer, Hux, Ice Hard, Hyperwave, Com Scanner, The Shuttle, and Tactical Jammer. So, so using Hux to not give a shit about their reinforced token right yeah because that yeah. can't cancel the first hit from 
But also Agent. giving them focuses <clears throat> when they're taking... Um, they take the evade the first for round. For Juke. It's for Juke. And they hold on to that. But then they also can barrel roll at need or even target lock and then get focuses from Hux. Nice. Which is also pretty good. Okay. Yeah. And then that that Upsilon is going to live for a while because Sensor... Well, Sensor Jammer, sensor jammer. Mm-hmm. against Expertise doesn't help. It, it so does. As long as you stay... Stressing them with Kylo's shuttle. Yes, it does. And if okay. he stays unstressed, uh, Ice Art is going to help out too. Yep. Yeah. Um, tactical... Sen- oh, Sensor Jammer and Tactical Jammer. So the so if you want to shoot at the Omegas through it, they get extra mm-hmm. defense dice and now they have five defense. That's not bad, yeah. So we'll reach out to these guys that sent in these lists and we'll hook them up with some swag. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't intend to play any of these because I don't ever want to play against that triple Ozatuck list. Yeah, I didn't no. face it in the tournament and I don't want to. I mean, you also have to kind of consider, like, are these lists good against the other stuff you'd conceivably see at a tournament? Right, and I'm sure these guys are aware of that. Yeah, because yeah, right. we asked mm-hmm. specifically and, to beat those three Wookiees. Yeah, That's why that you got the Gray the Squadron bounty. pilot. Yeah. yeah. And I think the the common thread is yeah you need juke, you need you need stealth. yeah because crack you shot one time control. is going to do it for you. You're going to need the juke. No. You need ways to mess with them in other ways. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, and I like them. They're fun. They seem like fun. Interesting list that if the meta wasn't so toxic right now would be kind of interesting. That will stand a decent chance of ruining the triple Wookiee's day. As they take them to a Wednesday night, have fun with them. Yeah, yeah, those could be fun. Um, Holy shit, Stu, what'd the floor just turn into? It just turned into lager. God damn it, did Jet spill? Or Mm, who spilled? I never spill my beer. Party foul. It was a giant um, golden dragon that's that breathed beer all over the floor, mm. as as was foretold in legend. Yeah, <laughs> um, we should name that dragon. <laughs> well, it's Log Air. Log Air. Ooh, I like Log that. Air the dragon. Oh, oh, oh. Thanks, Brody. <laughs> I'm glad you had some input on this episode. So, um, at the time that this episode comes out, uh, the most recent episode from last week was our sort of a, a, a preview of the floor is lager which is going to be it's our spin-off D slash tabletop rpg podcast because we are strongly considering bringing other systems into it um, we need to get through this first arc right we may mix and match it just kind of depends on see see where this goes yep but um the first episode was posted on our 3.2 feed um, we are launching a separate Flores Lager feed where we will post all of the episodes there, in, including the first one. Um, Which is already up. Yeah. It is It is up. Yeah. And we have um, we have separate Facebook and Twitter accounts. They're all The Floor is Lager, so at The Floor is Lager or Facebook.com slash The Floor is Lager. Which is L-A-G-E-R. Right, as in the beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also have... that's how we do. We also have a Gmail account. Send us emails. <laughs> uh, the Floor is Lager at gmail.com. Cool. Hmm. And yeah, it's super cool. It's fun. It's uh, we're having a lot of fun right now. It's uh, it's just it's me being the dungeon master and playing with Eric, Brody, and Scott. Um, there may be. I would look out for guest appearances and it's me and Jed being things, jealous, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll do our own. It's only podcast. it's only going to cr- only going to grow. God, I would listen to that so much. <laughs> it's it's just Jed as the DM and Mike is playing. <laughs> Lone wolf it up. Now it's gonna happen. Yeah, so, it can happen. <laughs> that's called lone wolfing, and uh, there's a whole subgenre of RPGs about that. Okay, uh, fuck that, Scott. What, what are you doing tomorrow? Like a weird uh, sex thing. Mike uh-huh. Caitlin's invited as well. Oh Jesus. <laughs> to lone wolfing uh oh <laughs> double d- dating and dragons fuck oh, Sc- Scott because you get Josie in there too it's oh, double dating and dragons now it's uh-huh. weird uh-huh. oh ooh that sounds catchy though mm-hmm. uh trademark pending <laughs> patent pending trademarked all of it all I'm the gonna, IP I'm stuff. gonna write it down on a letter and mail it to myself when I get home <laughs> um, uh copyright does not work like that anymore damn it sorry well it should um, so TIE Fighter Tuesday. Um, Any idea what you might be playing this week? I'm I mean, play it'll, it'll already be passed by the point. It'll already out. be passed. Um, I was, so Astroneer has a new update. Astroneer is a really cool, like, 
weird procedural generated game that's got a bunch of terrain mapping and just has a really cool art oh, style. Yeah. I remember it, it has when a new came art out. style. It has a new update, so I might just play that because I played a bunch of X-Wing Alliance. Yeah, and get I some, don't, some space stuff going. Yeah, and I don't know if I want to jump back into Jedi Outcast yet. <laughs> <laughs> just can't handle it. It burnt that you. That game is bad. It burnt you hard. It. It's not bad. I lost the last mission. The last time we played, I lost the mission at the end because I thought there was an enemy, so I shot it, and it was Lando, and it failed the whole mission and jumped me back to the very beginning. Well, that's what you deserve for shooting Lando, you prick. Right, but it's just like, you need to kill all the enemies. Well, there's one person I can see on this entire map that I'm running around. So you shot the one black guy you can see (laughs) on the entire map. No, the graphics are so bad that I couldn't (laughs) tell. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> there oh are so God. many things that I could say right now, There's, but they're all so super racist. There's so, so many inappropriate. things that Don't are so say wrong. any of those things. <laughs> no, I'm not Tater. going to. Tater. Uh, if you think the art's cool, you can check out our art director, Heather Mahler. Find her on Twitter at Heather Lime, and her Instagram is Heather Mahler88, and on Facebook at Heather Mahler Art. She did the yeah. She did the floors lager one. She also. did a special the shout out. The floors lager are, is legit. Yeah, and she did some little special little shout out to nice her. guy. Mm-hmm. Props Lordy. out for Inktober right now. Uh, oh, yeah. her every day that's, she's that's doing a new cool. sugar Look cat. At all the different costumes she's making the sugar cat. They're drawing mm-hmm. them in. So check that out. Costume. The one that's the milk carton is still my favorite. <laughs> the milk yeah, carton is really good. <laughs> Uh, all right so um a reminder as always check out our store you can find us you can find the store tab on our website we have got a special going on you know limited time not even limited (laughs) it's just the new prices because because i found that people like round numbers better than they do twelve dollars i was just being an asshole Hmm. um (laughs) so you can get a duchess alt art card for three dollars also done by heather mahler Mm -hmm. uh and you can get uh an alternative dial fidget spinner spin this not dials hashtag never forget never Never forget never forgive never forget justice Uh, for mike carpenter that one's for eight dollars or you can get both as a combo for ten dollars and Within the United States, that includes shipping. Oh, I was going to say that includes shipping. <laughs> but not to France. Oh. Yeah, if Brody was going to order one right now, he's out of luck. He's going to pay, pay a shipping. More shipping. Uh, so that stuff is also available on our Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash 3.2 company. Shout outs to our permanent high rollers, Caleb. Uh, he's that guy at the bar buying everybody drinks. And, Thanks, Dylan, and Dylan Smith, he bought us a picture. That's awesome. Uh, Thank you, when, Thank you. when this episode goes up, we will have a brand new limited $5 tier with the remaining uh, quick draw alt art cards from the Inner Mountain Cup. They are super sweet. They're amazing. Also, um, shout out to uh, X Wing TMG Photography. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you can find him on Facebook and Instagram. He made that alt art for us pretty much from scratch. That's right. It's, it's really pretty badass. Yeah. yeah. He does such good work. His, and I can't believe stuff. that's done with like the X-wing. Yeah, the chips. miniatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have a picture of that on our website and social media to go with it. But it's going to be a limited tier because we only have a few of those cards left to give out. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you check out our Facebook page, uh, we will have a poll up for new swag. We we did the preliminary one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're trying to figure out the next swag we make for Three Point Two Company. Do you want a koozie, a bottle opener? Some X-Wing accessories like a crit token, or if you've got some other idea, leave a comment on our Facebook page. Not movement templates. Yeah, not movement templates. That We'll just disregard that. Unless that it's comment. super awesome, then we'll regard it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bum. Leave us a review, and we'll pick a winner each week and try to get you some of the swag. Probably old stuff, but when we get the new stuff, yeah. you'll be one of the first. Um, and this podcast is recorded at the Evil Super Productions in front of a live studio audience. One person. <laughs> this week's win- how do I say this? Uh, this week's winner. That's why I put it on your thing, so you had to guess how to say it. Instead. <laughs> uh, this week's winner is Gizly from Facebook and Podbean. G I S L I. Uh, send us an email, and we'll give you some swag. So and I, I think apologize. we have enough extra uh, quick draws to send you the last one that doesn't take away from that Patreon. So, uh, Ooh. yeah, that, that's Ooh. some pretty exclusive, super good stuff. Review swag. Yeah. So thank you, and I apologize for slaughtering the name on that. 
But thanks. Thanks. He, he struggles with our names. That's okay. Okay. Well, thanks, Mike. Yeah, you're welcome. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Holy cheers, cheers boys. Cheers.